Hi, welcome to just paint episode six. Paint anything without a plan. We're gonna start with an obvious blank canvas, and we're gonna set up our palette with just a few paints. And so we just have a general selection of colors. We we'll use just a wide brush. The first color we dip the brush in is going to become our basic sky color. It just happens to be a soft brown color. Of course we're working wet on wet so what we're doing is we're taking our paint and we're thinning it out with turps to give us a nice wet surface and just work the paint right in. We start adding a few extra colors to it, some yellows, and once again just kind of work it in. At this current stage there is no design or plan for the entire painting, we're just doing the upper part of the painting which is probably going to end up being a sky. see by the reflections on the canvas exactly how wet it really is. So we just continue to work the background in, smooth out the edges a little bit. And start adding a little white just to soften it. doing the bottom once again because the, the sky is the color it is we've gone to a brown and we'll use that as the base drips we don't care about we'll just work them in The entire idea in the Just Paint series is to just apply paint to the canvas. Uh, let your right vein go free and let it do whatever it wants. Don't think about what you're trying to do. Just apply the paint to the canvas and just make it happen. Continue just filling in the base colors for the bottom of the painting. Using very wide strokes, just apply the paint, push it into the canvas. We don't care about the brush lines or anything else along the, those lines at all. The most important aspect of, of when you're painting is to paint for you. Using a palette knife, of course, we'll start adding some extra color into the sky area, because apparently now it is a sky. And we'll just work it in as we go. It's harder to tell on the on the video but the paint we're using is, was actually a purple. I like using palette knives on wet on wet because they drag paint around really really well. A bit later on, after we've applied a, a 
bunch more paint to the top, what we're going to do is just use a wide brush and just kind of work in the edges. Soften up the sky, give it a little bit of depth. Smooth the colors around just a little bit. Now the, the main trick to blending your colors like this is a really soft touch with the brush. You don't want to over blend because then it just becomes nothing. So with a really soft touch you just drag the brush across. This probably would be considered to be a dry brush technique. Now we move back into the ground area and we start putting some basic shapes in because we don't want just a straight line for an horizon. We want a little curvature. This will probably be a prairie scene. Uh, most people think the prairies are dead flat and they're nowhere close to flat. And in Calgary, of course, we're up in the foothills area, so we have a lot of uh, fairly high hills. And the closer you get to the mountains, of course, the more emphasized that particular trait becomes. And just adding raw colors to the painting, what we're doing is just uh, giving us something else to work with. giving us different shading patterns through the ground. And you notice I'm not real careful with the brush. Back using the palette knife, we start putting in a bit of yellow just to bring up the, the highlights. A little darker greens and some more yellows. idea here is to get caught up in what you're doing. Just allow yourself to flow with it. Don't really pay a whole lot of attention to what you're doing. Just allow yourself to do it. It's been suggested that anybody can draw or paint if they allow their right brain to be active. This entire scene will end up being abstract realism with just a hint of impressionism, which is what my main style is. So we'll use raw colors to actually emphasize various things. anything we don't particularly like or it didn't work out quite the way we wanted it to, palette knife to the rescue, we just kind of scrape it off and smooth the paint around. Using a fan brush, uh, it has different edges that you can use. 
We're putting in tree shapes, uh, wide areas. It's one of my favorite types of brushes, especially for doing more of the detail work. All of my painting videos are available at jamesbryronlove.com and that's with two R's. So Bryron is spelled B-R-Y-R-O-N. basic shapes for trees, a uh, little greenery, we also use the flat of the brush to actually pat down the paint force it into the background and then we pick up the background colors from there as well. This just becomes a continuous process of applying more and more paint over the existing paint. We utilize some of the color patterns that are already in there as, as part of the flow of the painting. And we're giving a slight autumn effect to this particular painting. shapes we're just using a really rough shape and that will give you the suggestions of the trees you may have noticed from this video and other videos we actually utilize a, a voice track over top the original uh, the main reason for that is it's really difficult to talk and paint at the same time mostly because uh, most talking is actually developed in the left side of the brain and if the left side of the brain is working to trying to describe whatever it is you happen to be doing what ends up happening instead is that you forget to paint or while you're painting you forget the talk and if you forget the talk while you're painting you're probably in a very good space for your right brain just running full tilt the right side of your brain is the creative side how this all works is how the colors play into each other. That creates a finished painting for me. down more and more detail. We'll start filling in more of the foreground with a little extra color. And then we'll go back and highlight some of the colors that already exist.
and for the most part we just add in as much color as we think we actually need. We're also using the fan brush to help blend in some of the color. We're also not looking for perfection on this, we're looking not for the realism, we're looking for the abstracted view, and the impressionism is what helps set it apart. So whether you, you paint in this particular style or not doesn't make any difference even if you're painting with extreme realism it's the way to go thanks for watching that'd be the finished images